Tonight on CTV, we see how Colorado State celebrates Earth Day. Get a closer look at so-called magic mushrooms. And learn more about a CSU basketball player signed to the NBA. Good evening, Rams. I'm Kristen McAllister. And I'm Matt Leisman. Earth Day was yesterday, but we kicked it off today at the LSC with the Earth Day Festival. Reporter Isabella Roberts has more. Today, festivities continued after pre-Earth Week events with the Earth Day Festival in the LSC Sculpture Garden. I mean, I feel like every day is Earth Day, but I like the fact that on at least one day, everybody can come together with the common goal of appreciating what the planet has done for us and like understanding that some things have gone wrong and some things could go better and basically committing to making things go better. So we're the Zero Waste team. Um, today we're making like eco bricks, which is like your hard to recycle plastic and you just have to rinse it off and then compact it down. And you can like build things with them like normal bricks. Um, and we're just, we have a mending cafe. And the Zero Waste team also hosts the magic mending that we do after this from two to three every other Tuesday. And we do things like teach people how to embroider, um, fixer clothes, patch it, and things like that. And the Zero Waste team, as, as like a whole, we volunteer at sporting events and sort trash, like at the basketball and football games. Um, and we just try to teach the student body about like what's compostable and what's recyclable and what goes in landfills and things like that. The tables featured at today's event consisted of groups from all over CSU's campus and the Fort Collins community. There's lots of us out here on the plaza, but one of the things we're celebrating today is the solar system that you see from the plaza on the, on, that's on the engineering building. That was our first solar system on campus, and its 10th birthday is in a month. And so we're celebrating the 10-year anniversary of solar coming to the rooftops of Colorado State. Now we have 14 systems across campus that are, we've, we make a thousand times more power than we did 10 years ago when we put this first system in. But I think now more than ever, Earth Day is every day and we need to make this important every day. This is Isabella Roberts reporting with CTV. So Chris, uh, Earth Day was yesterday. Uh, what kind of steps are you taking to help protect the environment? I mean, there's always the Save the Turtles campaign, so just cutting back on my use of plastic straws to kind of help save our marine environments, and then also just picking up trash as I'm walking along to help preserve our beautiful Earth. <laughs> How about you, Matt? Uh, yeah, reducing plastic use is a big thing for me. My mother is actually a huge proponent of getting rid of plastics completely. Uh, so whenever I can, I try to make sure I fill up my own personal water bottle, use reusable bags at the grocery store, that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. And for more information about this week's events, you can go to source.colostate.edu. Last week, a petition titled Fair Pay for Faculty at Colorado State University was launched in an effort to get livable pay for non-tenured faculty. The petition demands CSU implement guaranteed minimum salaries for non-tenured faculty. The salaries start at $52,000 per year for full-time faculty. The petition has received support from past and present faculty, CSU alumni, current students, as well as the community. Petitioners hope to reach 1,000 signatures by May 3rd and currently have 917. If you're interested in signing the petition, it can be found at the link below. On April 16th, two construction workers died after being buried in a 15-foot trench. The two men, Christopher Ramirez and George Valdez, were working at a construction site in Windsor. They were tying the house's sewer and water lines to Windsor's lines when the trench collapsed. More than 100 first responders came to the scene and worked for about eight hours to rescue the workers. Civilians had the idea to run a PVC pipe down to the men to communicate with them and to help them breathe. One man was completely buried and rescuers were unable to locate him until later, but the other was found near the pipe and managed to survive while being buried for more than six hours. That man was able to speak with his family through the pipe and say his goodbyes before he lost his life waiting to be dug out. Our crews felt that it was important for, for this family and for him to, to, to have an opportunity to speak. As responders, we, we were concerned that, that we might have a, a, a poor outcome, but we wanted to make sure that, that, that he and they got a chance to communicate. A GoFundMe has been set up for both men's families. Did you see the smoke in the foothills this past weekend? The Coloradoan reports the public should not be concerned. 
The United States Forest Service conducted a prescribed burn in the Poudre Canyon. Firefighters on Saturday burned 500 acres of the Elkhorn Pingree Hill. Prescribed fires, also known as controlled fires, may be designed to create diverse habitats for plants and animals, to help endangered species recover, or to reduce fuels preventing destructive fires. There will be no recount in the race for the Fort Collins City Council seat that has been won by only 40 votes. Julie Pignataro won over Noah Hutchinson in East Central Fort Collins District 2 in the city's closest election. If anyone wanted to request a recount, they had until last Tuesday. The less than 1% margin of victory was not within the threshold for an automatic recount. Pignataro told the Coloradan that she was relieved to know the outcome and was ready to get started on the city council. The new city council will be the, for the first majority female council in Fort Collins history. Summer break is nearing and some Fort Collins residents are worried an ordinance will cramp their summer style. The Coloradoan reports a local group is hoping to repeal the recently imposed curfew on backyard wood-burning fire pits. Supporters of the re repeal have been gathering signatures to force City Council to either rescind the curfew or to put it to a vote. The ordinance passed March 19th sets a 10 in the evening curfew for wood-burning fire pits and a 15-foot setback from property lines. It doesn't apply to fire pits that are non-wood burning, like gas fire pits or appliances designed for cooking, such as grills or smokers. Professor Camille Dungy is believed to be the first woman at CSU to win the Guggenheim Fellowship. Dungy teaches in the Department of English and is among 168 scholars, artists, and writers to receive the fellowship this year. According to Source, the picks were based on prior achievement and promise. The winning candidates were chosen from a group of almost 3,000 applicants in the Foundation's 95th competition. If you've walked around the plaza recently, you might have noticed signs for the CSU Psychedelics Club. I was curious, so I went to one of their meetings last week and spoke with the president and found the beginning of a nationwide movement. An estimated 24.4 million Americans suffer from PTSD. Teresa Egbert, a junior soil sciences and microbiology major, was one of them be the first thing I thought about when I woke up, the last thing I thought about when I went to sleep, and it was just destroying my relationships and everything in my life, really. Teresa tried many treatments, but none of them seemed to help until she looked into microdosing with psychedelic psilocybin mushrooms. It was the first time I woke up and I didn't want to end my life. It was the first time that I woke up and I was like, maybe I don't have to live with this forever. And it was just the first time that I felt like I had some kind of hope. Psilocybin is currently a Schedule One drug, meaning it has a high potential for abuse, no accepted medical uses in the United States, and a high risk of toxicity. However, the FDA recently granted breakthrough therapy status to psilocybin. Dr. Ken Kassenbrock, a mycologist at CSU, explains why. They appear to be make a major difference in many people's lives, a, a sort of transformative experience. John Hopkins University, the NYU School of Medicine, Sao Paulo University, and many others have tested and shown that psilocybin can help combat mental disorders. It's not just universities doing the testing, though. There are people already using these substances, and for many of those people, the biggest problems they face are the legal challenges rather than the toxicity associated with the substance itself. Psilocybin mushrooms are by no means a miracle cure for mental illness, and there are potential dangers. Uh, certainly at high doses, people can imagine they can fly and jump off buildings or stare at the sun and burn their retinas. So I, I think the models that are the most interesting in terms of society now are potential administration of these substances under the guidance of a therapist. There are already movements around the United States to make these treatments available. On May 7th, the city of Denver will vote on Ballot Initiative 301, which would decriminalize psilocybin mushrooms in the city. The state of Oregon will also vote in 2020 on an initiative that could legalize psilocybin therapy. These initiatives could pave the way for further legislation on a national level, and Teresa is excited. Mental health is a really big problem um, right now, so we need more options, and I think this could help a lot of people, so it's important to me. I would like to personally thank Teresa for sharing her powerful story with me. If you're interested in CSU Psychedelics Club, they meet on Wednesdays in LSC Room 376. 
Okay, so I have, I have a lot to say about mushrooms uh, because I learned a lot and did a lot of research mm -hmm. for that story. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that the CSU Psychedelics Club is not a place to do, source, or sell psychedelic drugs. Please do not go there trying to do that. Um, and yeah, it's just really interesting to me that there are so many potential applications for psychedelics. There's so much research out there showing that they could potentially help with a lot of different mental illnesses, but it's so hard to get the research done when they're on that Schedule One level. Yeah, of course, and I definitely think that with the new push for making mental illnesses more aware in uh, modern society, I think it's definitely important that we're kind of going through these new research projects to find different cures for that. So I think that even though some of that legislation may be a little difficult to get past, I think it's definitely something that's worth being looked into. I agree. And that's all we have for you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, Rams. Don't go anywhere, because up next, Hannah Willis will let us know how long this sunshine is going to last.